Here we are currently in the vehicle assembly building with a very tall rocket and now we're going out to the launch pad. And you'll see the uh, computer terminal in the upper left hand corner and I'm currently trying to run the uh, program that will cause the rocket to launch and go to an altitude of 110 kilometers. And countdown, lift off. And Scorpio Heavy has left the launch pad. It's going straight up. In just a moment, it's going to cut the main motor, liquid engine motor down to half throttle since it since the uh, four solid fuel boosters are giving enough thrust to increase the speed and once those solid fuel boosters run out of fuel then the throttle will be set back up to full and we're currently oh looks like we're five five kilometers above the surface of the planet Now in that large fairing at the top is part of the space station that I'm going to be adding, hopefully. Yeah, fuels yeah, just ran out, so we just switched back up to uh, full throttle. And you can see these uh, actions taking place in the terminal up in the upper left hand corner. The program that is controlling all of this is giving us reports on what's, uh, what it's doing. And we're up to 15 kilometers now. And the liquid fuel just ran out of fuel, uh, dropped that stage, and the second stage rockets just took off. We're up to 400 meters per second in speed. And now that we've gotten through most of the, uh, the thicker atmosphere, we're starting to tilt to, toward the horizon. Right now, every, uh, every kilometer in altitude we gain, it tilts about five degrees toward the east. Now, our, our goal is to achieve a horizontal speed of over 2,000 meters per second. Uh, because that's what it takes to reach and stay in orbit. We didn't start out tilting to the horizontal because we would have, it would have forced us to go through more atmosphere, which would have been more heat and more potential for damage to the, to the rocket. So for the first 20 kilometers, we got straight up, uh, and that way we're getting through uh, the least part of the atmosphere, and then we're starting to tilt toward the horizon. We are now at 48 kilometers above the, above the surface of the planet. But I'm looking at another number called the Apolapis Apsis. The Apolapsis is the, uh, the at altitude that we will achieve if the rocket were to cut off right now. And the rocket just cut off, and we are currently at 110 kilometers, which was our goal. And that's the Apolapis Apsis. We haven't reached that yet. We're still 67, only 67 kilometers above the planet. But we're going to continue to coast from the velocity that we had already achieved and we'll eventually get up to 110 kilometers before we start falling back down. So we're going to coast until we reach that altitude. The rocket is currently uh, resetting its vector to the horizontal or a z axis of zero x axis is 90 y axis is 90 and the z axis is zero so um thing is so long it takes it a while to change its vector like that but we still got a ways to go we're only at 80 looks like 80 well, approaching 90 kilometers yeah just hit 90 kilometers and you can see more clearly now the portion of the space station uh, that we're going to be adding. And that is going to be a, a corridor 
from which the solar, what's the term, the solar array will be added. All right, we're up to, it looks like we, we just hit 100 kilometers. So we've got 10 more kilometers to go. Of course, it's going to be slowing down a bit since we're reaching the uh, apex of, of our trajectory. 102 kilometers. You see the uh, solar panels that have been deployed now because uh, electricity is important, generating electricity. The batteries we have on, on hand won't, will only last a certain amount of time. And I've run into trouble a number of times where we ran out of electricity and I had forgotten to add solar panels and, and uh, of course left the uh, spacecraft and the people, the Kerbals on board still floating around in space in some other game somewhere. Now we're up to 100 and, uh, 108 kilometers. Now it's programmed to take over just before it reaches 110 kilometers and there we are. So we're now uh, trying to increase our orbital speed. We're currently up to uh, 1,080 meters per second. Now I'm not sure what's happening right now, why it's changing its vector. I'm using a program now that I downloaded from the internet in order to circularize our orbit. Because right now, if I, if I were to cut off the engine, we would orbit a little ways, but we would eventually come back down to the planet. So I've switched over to the map view, which is computer generated, and it's showing us that blue is the altitude or the, um, the orbit that's being formed right now for that rocket thrust. So we're now in orbit. Now I'm going to be spending the next part of this video trying to catch up with the space station which is complicated. <laughs> my, my orbit is smaller than the orbit of the space station, which means I'm going faster than the space station. So I do, did that to catch up. Now that I've caught up, I need to change my orbit so that it's uh, closer to the orbit of the, uh, of the space station. Now I'm using a tool here to figure out what my exact vector should be. And you notice my orbit is now a little bit larger, so I'm slowing down. You change, you get to a larger orbit by increasing your speed, which slows you down. You get to a smaller orbit by decreasing your speed, which speeds you up. <laughs> Uh, now you can see the little indicator there, yellow square indicator, showing you where the uh, space station is. Okay, now I'm changing my vector to what the uh, computer told me it should be. And then I fire for half a second. There we go. See, we're much closer now. Now once you get close enough, say within 10 kilometers, then you get closer to the space station by the process of aiming toward it Increasing your speed, which is increasing your relative speed to the space station. And uh, ultimately, we want that to be zero, so we're, we're actually moving along with the space station. 
So they turn toward the space station in order to get closer to it. And then you turn away from the space station, retrograde, in order to slow down the relative speed. Now the retrograde is a retrograde in relation to the space station, not the retrograde in relation to the, the orbit of the planet. Now I made a miscalculation here, and you'll see that the relative speed is greater than I was able to, to cancel it out, which caused the space station to go by me. And, uh, and I've done that before and had the space station go by me a whole lot closer than that. And there it goes, it's already a kilometer and a half, two kilometers away, three kilometers away. So I aimed toward the space station. By the way, that thing that just went by was our, uh, was our uh, second, third stage thruster. All right, going to the retrograde to slow down our relative speed, which is 30, well now 20, now it's 10, now it's down to zero. Well, close to zero. It's uh, 2.2.1 meters per second difference speed between uh, our rocket and the space station. So I'm going to aim toward it, speed up, aim to the retrograde, slow down, aim toward it, speed up, go to retrograde, to slow down. And we're, uh, relative speed is now one meter per second. Now, I just switched over to the space station. So I'm now controlling the space station. And I just indicated that I want the space station to aim toward me. Toward the rocket. Those little rockets that we're using to change our directions and such, those are called RCS. can't remember what that stands for. They're RCS thrusters. And I've got an array of them on that larger section uh, down there, which enables me to have a lot of control over the rocket to make it easier to connect it to the station. All right, we're in toward now. We're still, well, we're still a full kilometer away. I just tested my air brakes. All right, little thrust there, move closer. And uh, 999 meters. 980 meters. Now, I don't have to thrust the whole time because without any atmosphere up there, once we get up to a certain speed, it'll stay at that speed. So we can cut off the, uh, the rockets. Now I'm going back to the retrograde because we've got a relative speed of 4.8 meters per second. And we won't be able to, uh, won't be able to connect when our speeds are that different. So we'll go back to the retrograde, fire our rockets to get it back down to close to zero. We don't want it at exactly zero because we want to continue to be getting closer. We're down to, looks like 800, 810 meters. Relative speed of four, four meters per second. So we're already set up in the retrograde. You know, we're four meters per second, but we're getting closer. We're getting closer. We're just getting closer that fast. You can see the moon up there beyond. And just speeded up the video. So now I'm aiming toward the space station to get closer. Now we're going back to the retrograde in order to cancel out that relative speed. 
or five meter, 5.2 meters per second different speed from the space station. Now we're down to 0.1 meters per second. And you see the space station is practically standing still now, which is what we want. Now there's still a uh, relative speed of 1.4. And, and once you get close, you really want that to be zero, which I didn't achieve, but we'll let you discover that. And we're within 245 meters. Now I've just pulled up a tool that helps to uh, line up the portions of the uh, that are, are going to connect. I want to cancel out relative speed one more time. By the way, that music is music that plays the whole time while you're in space. There's a different tune that's playing while you're in the vehicle assembly building. And uh, when it's uh, high speed, the music sounds different. And what it does when you're actually working. Okay, now we've got it canceled down to 0.2 meters per second relative speed, which is pretty good. Now in real time, it takes a while to turn these things around. And I doubt that I'll try to connect the uh, part that's so long again. And we are now 140 meters away. And you can see that we're lined up pretty well right now. But what I'll have to do is switch back and forth between the two vehicles and make sure that they're still aimed toward each other. It's not just a matter of being aimed toward each other. They've got to line up with each other. And when the relative sp speed is high, that gets more difficult to do. We're up to relative speed difference of two meters per second now. And I'm going to start using the um, RCS thrusters to uh, control my speed toward toward the space station and, and retrograde to the space station. Close enough now, I don't need the main thruster. I don't want to use the main thruster because it's stronger and I don't want to speed up too fast. Now, because of our difference in uh, relative speed, it's going to appear like the space station is trying to rotate or, yeah, rotate around me, not rotate, but orbit around me which is going to make it a lot harder for me to, to connect, but I'm going to try. Now you can see from our line up there that we're off a good bit. There are magnets that will pull those two docking uh, uh, things together. And that's what I was hoping I could get close enough that it would pull and straighten us up. But it didn't do that. I just had to keep working on my lineup until finally they will connect. There, connected. So our space station now has the first part of its solar array. Uh, 
Now, there's nothing keeping me from disconnecting now. It's just that once I get connected, it's kind of hard. I, I want to enjoy the connection. And sometimes I'll take this time to... Um, now, I've already disconnected, as you can see. Now it looks like I'm speeding up, but what I'm actually doing is slowing down. I'm slowing down, which caused the uh, space station to look like it was being left behind. But its speed has not changed. Now in just a moment, I'm going to switch toward an orbital retrograde, which is going to slow me down to the point where I should finally re-enter the atmosphere and uh, land safely on the planet. Current altitude is 150 kilometers. And I discovered that I no longer have control over the rocket. Uh, so I had to go to the terminal and use uh, the programming commands to stop the rocket. Not sure yet why that happens, but... But as long as I can get it stopped, I'm okay. We're okay. Kerbals are okay. Now we're at 147 kilometers. 146, and I'm just speeding up. I have to, the uh, rocket cannot adjust its vector uh, while it's at speed. So we're going to have to turn the speed down periodically. And this is not speeding up the rocket, it's speeding up the time. If it weren't for that, orbital rocketry would be real boring. Trying to remember some of the settings that I have here. Right, now I've just deployed an inflatable heat shield and detaching from the final booster. There it goes. And it's difficult to keep that thing aimed in the right direction. And it's, it's designed to do the best that it can, but I've just switched on my RCS uh, thrusters to try to help keep it aimed in the right direction, retrograde direction. And in just a moment, I'll. Uh, deploy the uh, air brakes to try to help. There they go. Okay, we're getting down, we're slowing down to the point now where we're not compressing the uh, 
atmosphere in order to create the fire, the heat. Now this is a difficult place that I've not figured out how to solve it because if I detach, when I detach the heat shield, because of its nature, because it's so spread out like that, it's going to want to go slower than the rocket. And and what I haven't been able to figure out how to do yet is how to uh, have it detach and then separate. Uh, we're down to 10 kilometers in altitude. All right, I just I just detached, and what happened was it just ripped the space the um, capsule that our purpose were in away from the rest of the uh, vehicle here, and because the the uh, computer is attached to this part of it, the program defaulted to follow it instead of our purpose. But since it has now hit and exploded. The computer now hits the ground again and it explodes. It'll switch us back to the uh, space capsule that our purpose is in. So I'll uh, deploy the parachutes there. Turn it so that it's uh, bottom down. And then I'll deploy the uh, landing struts. And it's now down to two kilometers, 1.9 kilometers. And I'll speed it up, because it takes a long time to make that last kilometer with parachutes. Uh, 1,500 meters, 1,300 meters, 1,200 meters. 100 meters, and we land. So. That was a successful flight. Got my Kerbals back home, got my um, solar array connected to the space station. We're all golden.